you very much. I think it's so late today, and usually at that time in Spain we are sleeping the siesta, yeah. so probably you are very tired. I'm going to prepare a presentation, a very brief presentation, because it's very difficult to talk about toxicity in 15 or 20 minutes. I think it's going to be very practical, and logically you can uh, interrupt me if you have any question. This is the background of the presentation. Uh, at the beginning, we're going to compare the immunotherapy toxicity as compared with chemo in second line and first line. You see uh, the slide before. Then, if there are any differences between PDL1 inhibitor or PDL1 inhibitor, how is the toxicity with immunotherapy over the time? I think it's very important the four point because we need a multidisciplinary approach, a very good networking to approve this strategy, and only one slide of conclusion. You see before this slide, basically it's very clear. If you compare in the second line setting chemotherapy, docetaxel versus nivolumab or pembrolizumab or atezolizumab, the toxicity grade three, four is much better with immunotherapy in terms of 30%. Basically, docetaxel produce uh, 50% of grade 3 4 and immunotherapy, in this case nivolumab, in ischemia 7%, in non ischemia 10%. It's the same in first line. You have seen the data published last year in the New England with pembrolizumab. You can see here the, the toxicity related with the combination of cisplatin is more or less 50% again. And again, the pembrolizumab is much better, but in this case, 26% of grade 3, 4. And it's more or less the same with nivolumab. Nivolumab, 17% of grade 3. A chemo, again, more than 50%. It's not very clear when you combine, you see before the data, but you combine chemotherapy and immuno, uh, basically the grade three, four toxicity is much worse. Yeah, we are increasing for 10, 20% to 40% of grade three, four. And when you combine CTL4 or PD1, and this example is the Checkmate 012, you can see here the combination with NIVO three milligrams plus EP1 milligram, the grade three, four is going to be 30%. Is that approved value for our patient or we need to reduce the toxicity? As I said before the first speaker. There are differences between toxicity between PDL1 and PDL1 inhibitors. You remember that presentation in the last uh, Congress in Vienna, World Lung Cancer Congress, and in general, if you review all the side effects, there are no difference. But if you review the immunorelated side effects, there is an increase of the incidence of side effects with the PD-1 inhibitors. And that's more intense in the pneumonitis. You can see here how it's difference is 0 0.01. Why is that? There are too many hypotheses. One of them, it could be PD-1 inhibitors are blocking PDL one and PDL 2 and probably PDL 2 has a key factor in that point. How is the toxicity with immunotherapy over the time? Basically, a, a very important message today, uh, any organ could be affected by immunotherapy. That's a review published last year from the uh, Gustave Roussy uh, uh, Medical Oncologist Group in Annals um, showed it's very important to be alert because toxicity related with immunotherapy is very uncommon, but when it's present, sometimes it's very life-threatening. So we, be, we have to be alert and we have to be work all together and establish some guidelines to combat the, the toxicity. Here is the toxicity. You can see here very clear how the majority of the toxicity is happening during the first four months. And by incidence, the most frequently is going to be skin, followed by GI, endocrine, hepatic, and pulmonary toxicity. Here you can see how we can divide the toxicity into uh, different ways. I, I think there is a early toxicity. That's early toxicity is happening before uh, two months. And you can see here is skin, GI, and hepatic. And there is a late toxicity, more than two months unestablished. And it's going to be the pneumonitis, the endocrine disorders, and the renal impairment. Most of the toxicity is going to be treated by esteroids. There is a 
concrete dilemma if steroid is influenced or not in the efficacy of the immunotherapy, but more of the cases going to be resolved after using the steroids between two or four uh, weeks. The only exception is the skin toxicity. You can see here in the slide how the skin could be more of the time and it's very intermittent. You can see here, uh, you can see later on some case report from my, from my clinic. The message is we need uh, to learn all together. I think it's very important the networking and some recommendation. Again, a referral to the paper from Annals, from the Gustave Roussy. They established five very important points. The first one is we need to prevent. I think it's important if a medical oncologist is going to use immunotherapy, he has to be aware how immunotherapy is working, but as well how is immunotherapy can produce some toxicity. We need to know if patient or her family has risk factors, and I think we need to give information very clear to patient before starting the strategy. I think it's very useful in my clinic, the, the patient cards, for example. Then we need to be anticipate to the, to the side effects. So it's very, very important in the clinic before starting on immunotherapy to make a good examination, to be alert about the skin, and to start with a blood test, including creatinine, including liver tests, and very, very important to include them uh, hypothyroidism, uh, uh, thyroid function. When you detect the problem, it's important to make a difference between this is a real side effects or it's a progression of the disease or it's a symptoms related with the lung cancer. And when you need to treat patients, it's important as well. Patient needs to be hospitalized because the toxicity is a grade three or four. You need to use IV uh, steroids, you need to use uh, antisuppressive drug, or you need to stop definitely uh, uh, immunotherapy because the toxicity is not recovered. And as well, it's important to monitor the toxicity. What happens when you stop the drug? Uh, it's recovery more of the time in two, four weeks. But as well, sometimes you need to stop definitely the drug and patient continue on treatment and you need to know the legs toxicity. This is a general recommendation. Basically, in my clinic, when a patient has a grade one or grade two toxicity, patient can be treated ambulatory. Uh, usually, you don't need to use esteroid, only in grade two. Uh, a skin toxicity usually is recovered with a topical steroid. Sometimes you need oral steroid, but you can continue with immunotherapy. You don't need to stop immunotherapy, only in grade two, no recover after three months. And it's different the situation when you have grade three or grade four. Uh, you need to hospitalize patient. Usually toxicity is very high and you need to use IV treatment. In this, in this case, basically in my experience, in my clinic, I call the specialist. It could be a pneumologist if there is a pneumonitis, the dermatologist if there is a skin toxicity. And usually you need to stop definitely uh, uh, immunotherapy with its grade four and in grade three, there is a great debate. No? Sometimes you can continue, sometimes you can't. And it's important to uh, uh, establish with the patient and the family a uh, risk-benefit ration. This is, for example, a, a, an approved for the dermatology uh, toxicity. We are very uh, confident with the dermatology toxicity regarding the EGFR TKIs. Basically, the toxicity with immuno, I think, is different, you can see rash, you can see pruritus, you can see uh, uh, dry skin, but you can see as well vitiligo with the anti c 4 Basically in the clinic, most of the skin toxicity is going to be grade one or grade two. Uh, I don't have I have only one case with a grade three toxicity in more than 100 patients treated in my institution. Um, you can see here the case. For example, this is a patient from my clinic with 60 years. Yeah, he was diagnosed in October 2013 with an ischemia stage four. He was treated inside a clinical trial. I think Dr. Patharis presented a clinical case very similar before with the combination of CIS-GEM nesitumumab. Remember, nesitumumab is an anti-EGFR and can produce sun rash. This patient developed grade two rash. He, he stayed a very good 
PFS with 11 months, and he started in the Birch trial in second line phase two trial with atezolizumab uh, with a very good stable disease. But you can see here how patient develop skin toxicity, a uh, very strange rash on the nose, and very atypical uh, toxicity on the fingers with ulcers uh, bleeding after 16 months on treatment. Patient had to stop at the solizuma for two weeks. We referred to the dermatologist. I used topical and oral antibiotics. Uh, all the toxicity was resolved and patient restart at the solizuma after that. This is another approach from uh, GI toxicity. We are confident as well with the GI because chemotherapy produced and, and other drugs. Most of the uh, toxicity related with the GI is going to be grade one or grade two as well. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. We need to be alert with the colitis when you are using a combination, for example, with anti-PD-1 or anti c 4 but basically only to be alert, grade three or grade four, and patient need hospitalization, use again IV steroids and sometimes infliximab. This is another case from my clinic. In this case, it's a adenocarcinoma, stage four, EGFR, ALK, wild type, and he was inside the Checkmate 227, you know this trial is running. Uh, first line NIVO plus EP uh, with a very good response on the line. You can see the slide. But however, patient after 24 weeks on treatment developed um, acute chest pain with vomiting and a very weight loss. And you can see here patient was hospitalized with IV steroids and endoscopy was performed. And you can see here a very intense uh, mucositis with a biopsy with a, a lot of CD8. That patient, uh, before, I, I don't know how you... Uh, last patient uh, stopped treatment and he is in response after of, uh, four months of treatment, actually. Uh, this one is how to approach the uh, endocrine toxicity. In my experience, the main toxicity on that way is going to be the thyroid. The hypothyroid is for me is most frequently with the anti-PD and anti-PD one that hyperthyroid is. Usually when you detect the uh, alteration in the thyroid function, I call the endocrinologist. And um, basically it's very important to make a blood test including the thyroid function at baseline and repeat every two months. Uh, so I think it's easy to detect because the, clean, the, the symptoms related with the hypothyroidism or the hyperthyroidism are very inspecific. You know, the main symptom with the hypo is the fatigue. All our patients have fatigue. And the main symptom with the hypothyroidism is weight loss, palpitation, diarrhea, more. Most of the, our patients in the clinic have that symptoms. So if you detect the hypothyroidism, you need to use uh, uh, levothyroxine, depending on the dose, depending on the TSH, and you can restart treatment when you control the uh, thyroid function. This is another case from my clinic. In this case, stage four ischemias, first line carboplatin paclitaxel, a good response at the beginning, but quick uh, progression in six months. He was in the pembrolizumab trial second line Kino 010 with a very clinical benefit, with a very good partial response, not only in the lung, as well in the liver, but however, after 13 months, he progressed with the only disease in the left pain, very painful, and he was under radiotherapy, and after radiotherapy, he developed a very in, in important fatigue, a grade three fatigue. It could be related with the radiotherapy, but he developed an hypothyroidism, and he improved after levothyroxine. And the last uh, slide, according to the uh, toxicity management, is very important, pneumonitis. Pneumonitis is not very frequent, less than 5%, but usually the symptoms are very similar than the disease, so it's important to be alert, it could be present. Uh, in my experience, usually when patients start on dry cough, or I special uh, a pneumonitis, I start on oral steroids, but when you are not under control, I think you need to rule out 
infection, you have to rule out a pulmonary embolism, you have to rule out a progression of the disease. Sometimes need, patient need to be hospitalized and start on IV uh, steroids. That's a case from my clinic again. Another patient, 73, female, stage four, non-small cell lung cancer patient, adeno, EGFR, ALK, wild type. A very good response with the first line, the Paramount uh, schedule, and second line nivolumab in a expanded use program. Patient with a good response, you can see again a good response in the lamb. After 12 cycles, start with dry cough and short breath, and he developed an important pneumonitis on the right lung. Patient uh, start on treatment, and he recovered after four months uh, of treatment, and he uh, stopped the drug. Steroids treatment affect or not the uh, efficacy of the immunotherapy? Probably data we have are from melanoma. This uh, poster uh, presenting in ASCO two years ago, and there are no differences in overall response and duration of response using nivolumab with or without immunotherapy. And my last slides and conclusion, practical conclusion, I think it's very clear toxicity from immunotherapy approved at present in non-small cell lung cancer are less frequent than chemotherapy. They are very uncommon, but sometimes they are very dangerous, so we have to be alert. I think there are no clear differences between PD-1 and pd one inhibitors, only a few more uh, details with uh, immunorelated uh, toxicity with the <coughs> PD-1. I think when you decide to use immunotherapy, uh, we need to do a very high networking. Everybody from the team must be educated about potential immunorelated side effects. It's important to know the grade because grade three or grade four, sometimes you need to stop definitely immunotherapy and patient can continue with that very effective draft. So we need to know how to manage that situation. And I think reinitiation of the therapy depends sometimes of the patient, depends sometimes of the experience. It's very clear, grade four, you need to stop. Uh, I think it's very, uh, it's not clear, grade two or grade three, what is maintained on the time. And thank you for the attention.